Hi, my name is Joe Mullen. I'm uh, Ambassador for Mission 22. Um, Michelle posted uh, a thing on our group the other day um, asking us to share a lot of stuff and uh, uh, a lot of people said no and there's good reasons for that. Um, we kind of explained it to her. Uh, as you can see I'm a disabled vet and I have PTSD but not from the service. Uh, my PTSD stems for 20, 20 years underwater recovery and a few life events. Uh, for the other combat veterans out there, uh, when I was 17, I was going to see my girlfriend and I had some guy shooting at me. So I do know what live rounds sound like zinging by your head. Uh, I didn't realize that they were even rifle rounds until one hit a telephone pole right above my head. That woke me up. Um, the reason uh, we don't go into great detail about uh, the events that causes our PTSD is that it, it brings up some memories that we'd rather keep, you know, subdued. Um, they do spring up time to time. Um, when I was working at Lowe's, my sales associate uh, put me into a full-blown episode one night. And in the 20 years of recovering all the bodies that I did and seeing all the various states they were in, uh, it's just like a slideshow going by my face. And uh, it, it took me an hour and 45 minutes sitting by myself in the break room to get myself, my head together enough to where I could go back on the sales floor. And even then, I wasn't fully functioning. Um, it was I was highly in a, in a high irritate, irritable mood. Uh, if somebody would have crossed me, I probably would have killed them. Um, this is one of the reasons we really don't like getting into it. Uh, but um, the thing I want to tell you is is that um, we can discuss it amongst ourselves. Um, I can only talk with other people who did underwater recovery and combat veterans can really only talk to the combat veterans because we're the only ones that understand the emotions of what you went through, you know. Uh, we can understand the situations and everything. Been there, done that, walk the walk, talk the talk. Um, to try to explain it to somebody else, it's very, very difficult. Um, it's we know you want to understand we know you want to be compassionate but anything you say to us coming back to us all we hear is lip service and it highly irritates us it pisses us off uh, i have one issue i'm trying to deal with uh, i've been trying to deal with it for a long time and uh, i finally went and saw a psychiatrist about it and i spent six hours with this woman and walked out of her office screaming pissed off sitting there going there's no way you can help me because you don't understand it and slammed the door on the way out never got a bill for it um the other thing is 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 i live daily in fear and my fear is something's going to trigger another full-blown episode and it's difficult to go through it and it's it could be a noise it could be uh, a certain sound it could be a certain word it could be just in the infliction in somebody's voice will trigger it will trigger the memories and get us going and uh i'm i'm up here in rochester mass right now and there's cranberry bogs all around and when they want to put more sand in the cranberry bogs, they actually use helicopters. And the helicopters will fly the sand in and drop it into the bogs. And I get a number of these helicopters going all at once. And if certain helicopters make certain sounds, and for the most part I can ignore them because I know what they are and, and I know what they're doing, 
but occasionally the sound gets transferred because of the weather. It gets it gets modified a little bit. And if it starts sounding like there's a number of Coast Guard helicopters flying over someplace, I start losing it. And uh and it's very difficult, you know, I gotta sit there and tell myself uh, what's going on? It's like it's not Coast Guard helicopters. It's the helicopters flying the sand into the bogs. Get your head together. Get your get your act together. Um, and it's it's a hard way to live. Um, I'm solo kayaking the East Coast and the Gulf Coast, and I'm going to be kayaking a river in Texas to get up to my daughter, who's living in Wiley. And uh, when I'm out on the water, uh, it's so peaceful out there. I don't have to worry about, the, you know, even though I did on water recovery, that's a strange part. I'm at peace on the water. Uh, I'm concentrating on um, the movement of the water and stuff, so I know how to maneuver my kayak through it. But I'm, I'm at total peace. I'm, I'm very tranquil out there, and I'm not really worried about something triggering me. Uh, I've already paddled uh, about 1,000 miles and I had one near episode in, in Maine, but I quickly sit there and said, where the hell did that come from? I don't remember any triggers, you know, triggering it. And thought about it for a couple of minutes, just blew it off and just kept going. So I was right back to, to my normal state of being tranquil in the water. But I don't think I'm going to have that problem the rest of the trip. Um... I don't know what else to say to you uh, veterans, uh, I mean, you're the civilians out there in Mission 22 that don't quite understand what's going on here. Um, I did, when I was 17, try to commit suicide twice. As you can see, I didn't succeed. Um, the first time I was going to take my car and drive at high speed and slam it into something immobile, like a bridge abutment. Um, Cut my car, started up, threw it in drive, and the drive shaft fell on the street. I mean, completely, both ends. Um, second time, uh, I had a 22 rifle because I was at my high school gun club, and uh, took a 22 long hollow point, cut it into a dum dum, put it in the rifle, had the thing in my mouth, pulled the trigger, misfired. Um, opened the breech. Turn the turn around a quarter turn, closed the breach, walked in my backyard, blew, blew a big damn hole in the yard. So at that point, I just said, <laughs> I just looked up and says, "You're on, me and you, I got it." Um, and I'm still here. And because I understand how your mind works to get you into that, uh, into that point where you think. There's no other recourse than to end your life. Um, I know how your brain works to get you to that point. Like I said, I tried it twice. I do, you know, looking back, I know what I was thinking and what I, what my thought process was and everything around. I mean, I had really good friends. I mean, we, we, we were having a good time. I was surfing, but I, I still didn't see any future. You know, I didn't see how I'd fit in to, to, to anything and uh, thought that was, you know, you know, end it. It'd be better off for everybody. Um, but like I said, I failed twice and I'm still here. Um, and I'm still doing things for other people. Uh, you know, doing underwater recovery, um, for 20 years trying to find closure for the families you know hoping I'd find their loved ones um, some of the ones are really ugly there was three occasions where uh, I probably should have been dead but I'm here uh, got myself into some really closed confined spaces and had to figure myself how to get myself out uh, except for one time, I, I was doing a plane crash off uh, Logan Airport in Boston and uh, penetrated the, the plane all the way up, almost to the cockpit, and uh, saw the pilot's wife there. Uh, I won't go into details. Uh, that's one of my worst ones. And uh, I got stuck, and my buddy had to pull me out. I thought I was being electrocuted, but I wasn't. 
and it turned out that I had a sharp piece of metal sitting right at my temple. And if I would have moved my head the way I was squirming my way up the aisle, I would have jammed it inside of my head and I wouldn't be making this video. So, um, I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you people. Uh, it's not an easy life <laughs> living with this. Um, I deal with it pretty good. Um, I got a high IQ. I got a lot of common sense. Uh, and uh, I can sit, if I'm having an episode, I can sit down and go, why am I feeling this emotion? I shouldn't be. And I call, you know, for myself, I call it peeling the onion. You know, when you have an episode, you take it layer at a time. You know, why do I want to laugh and cry at the same time? That doesn't make any sense. Why am I feeling this? That doesn't make any sense. Um, the thing that I get down to is the core, which is depression. And you're constantly living in with depression. But the thing, you, you shrink it down to a level that you're for you is normal um and uh and then you just go on with life and uh the worst one is is <laughs> your adrenal gland kicks in so you get that fight and flight when you first get triggered and the problem is you don't know which one you want to do uh which gets makes it very confusing um, you know, do I want to beat the hell out of somebody or do I want to run? And if I'm going to run, where do I run to? And it gets really confusing, but you, you work past that. Um, you know, depression, anxiety, fight or flight, you know, they're all hitting you all at once. And you're just trying to, uh, get back to some sense of normalcy. Um, so, uh. I hope this helps uh, a lot of you civilians out there who want to help us. <laughs> it's greatly appreciated. Um, but don't ask us for specifics. One, we're not going to tell you. Um, the second thing is, uh, because PTSD is still a stigma, uh, and we're trained to be strong, and it's seen, the stigma is there's something wrong with us. You know, we're crazy. There, there's something wrong with us. Um, we're not right in the head. Um, and they're finding out, yeah, that's actually medically uh, reasons for that. Uh, our brain gets rewired and we have certain things going on. Um, but the thing is, is we'll hide it. You know, we don't want to be seen as there's something wrong with us, that we're broken. Um, you know, we know we need to be fixed. Um, but the thing is, is we hide it very well. We'll sit there, you know, we'll have a smile on our face. Um, but one of the things I can tell you is look at somebody, look somebody in the eyes that never had a trauma. And you'll see that little twinkle in their eyes. Look in my eyes or a combat veteran's eyes, and it's blank. There, there's a void. <laughs> and um, we can kind of look at each other, and when we look each other in the eyes, I have this happen all the time, is I'll look at a combat veteran in the eyes, we'll look at each other and just kind of give ourselves a, a little nod, and no words are said. It's just like, yeah, I know what you're going through, and you know what I'm going through. So... Uh, you know, there's a brotherhood among veterans. Can't be explained, can't be broken. And uh, we'll always help each other, no matter what. So, um, if you see me along the coast, step down and say hi, help me out. Um, I'll be probably starting up again in April. I'm stuck here in Mass for the winter, um, but I'm going to do the whole thing, and uh, I got a, a website I got going, acske2017.org, and I've got all kinds of people telling me that when I finish, write a book, so um, we'll see what happens. Um, 
If I write a book, I'll probably <laughs> donate part of the proceeds to Mission 22. Um, just because that's what it was all about, the whole mission. So I hope this helps you. Thank you for listening.